Okay, so I've written about and did a video on clearing records. This is the turntable I am using. Oh, as you can see, it comes with Audacity software. Well, there you can see it's Audacity. Now, um, I didn't use that software. Now, as you can see, this is the real thing. This is uh, the turntable. Nothing extravagant. Now, out of the back, you have a USB cable. Okay, so it's real simple. Just take the USB cable. And you plug it into your USB port. Okay? The software that I was using for my um, uh, vinyl captures of, di for, of digital uh, is uh, SoundForge Audio Studio, and I believe it's version 10. So after you've got your, uh, your USB turntable plugged into your USB port, and you go ahead and open up this particular software, and it's really, really easy. After you've uh, opened it up, uh, you go to you go to tools and you hit vinyl recording and restoration and you hit the device properties and of course it's showing that that was that the actual turntable was chosen now uh, once you've got that chosen you want to come over uh, and and actually do the device properties you want to actually open up the properties and check your levels. Now this level is listed at two. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to like three. Um, it's showing a little bit of uh, signal over here. Okay. Once you've done that, then you go ahead and hit next, and you put your record on your turntable and start it. Okay, so after you're done recording all this, you hit pause and hit next. Now here, um, on this particular screen, or it says uh, it's asking you whether you want to do audio restoration and peak normalization. I don't usually do either one um, because I try to do some things afterwards. But uh, for your purposes, peak normalization basically makes everything louder across the board, and audio restoration tries to take out the pops and clicks um, it does an okay job of it but I always do that in another, in another piece of software anyway after you get that done you hit next and what it will do now is it's, it's normalizing the audio which takes not that long it's, it's a short process with a, with a decent computer okay once that is done all right now I'm trying to detect the tracks how many how many tracks are on that particular piece of vinyl and there's a pretty good job of it um, live albums are a little bit more of a problem because of the audience noise between songs um, but if it's a, it's a normal regular album that's not a, uh, a live album it does a pretty good job of it although I do recommend after this is complete that you go through and check to see where the the breaks are now this one is showing that there are nine different songs on this which I think is correct let me take a look at the album cover and make sure uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is correct. After that, then it'll ask you to go ahead and move forward. So you go ahead and hit next. And it's going to ask you the uh, album title. Album title. Uh, on this one, it's Union Jacks by the Babies, which of course is misspelled because it's the late 70s, early 80s. And ask you to name the tracks. 
Now I definitely recommend doing that because if you don't do it now, you're never going to get it right later. Uh, let me go ahead and pause this. Okay, so it's now asking you, to, after you filled in your title tracks names, uh, you go ahead and hit next. Okay, now it's going to ask you whether you want to burn a CD or save tracks on your hard drive. Um, I like to save the tracks on my hard drives and, and, and record the CD later. Uh, if you don't do it, if you do it that way, it's, I think it saves time. Um, the reason why I say it's, I think it saves time is that it takes the time for the CD burner to burn that CD and I would prefer to do it later than at the time I'm doing this. Also, um, Okay, and it's asking you which format you want to save it to. Um, I always choose a WAV audio format because I have a tendency to want to work on that particular track later or those particular tracks later with different software than, than uh, SoundForge offers. So I, uh, in this particular case, I'm going to save it as a WAV audio. You can save it as an MP3. If you're going to save it as an MP3, I would suggest to do it at 192. Uh, they sound better, way better than the 128 and 196 kilobytes. Um, ideally, you'd rather have 320, but uh, that's not available for this program. Okay, go ahead next, and it saves it now to the audio to the hard drive. And once again, it doesn't take all that long to do. Um, it does it pretty quickly. And we're at 30 percent. As you can tell, it's moving along pretty quickly. Not as fast as on, on my on my desktop, but it is fast. All right. Now, at this point, it asks you whether you want to do another album or are you finished with this this particular uh, project. That's how easy it is. Um, I don't know about Audacity. Um, I have not used it. But uh, SoundForge Audio Studio 10 is simplicity at its finest. All right, uh, I will speak to you again.